what's up coach welcome back to the channel so today i want to talk about something that i get asked on a regular basis and that is how do you design your small group training sessions so i thought it would be a good idea to come on here and focus a little bit more on the coaching aspect of your business rather than the actual business itself now i want to be clear as well that the way you run your sessions and the quality of your sessions is going to be really important in how successful your business and the experience your clients have with you. OK, so you could be great at marketing. You could have a fantastic business. But if your training sessions aren't of a good quality. And they aren't getting results with the clients you're working with. OK, yes, you will get clients but you will, you will attract less committed clients, okay? And the reason is because parents know what quality looks like. They know when, you know, you are a good coach. They know when your sessions are planned. They know if whether you have put enough for effort and energy into designing, planning, and es essentially conducting the session uh, to a high enough uh, standard. So if you don't know me or if this is the first time you've come across our channel and if you're watching this video for the first time as well, I've been in this industry for over 15 years now. I've been coaching since the age of 17 and I can assure you, and, and this is something I do very, like this is something I'm very, very consistent with is that I always, always design and plan my sessions before I even get to the field, right? So what I've written at the top here is all the key to success is preparation and organization, right? Always design and plan your sessions before you get to the field. Now, the session I'm about to break down today is for a group of players aged anywhere between 10 to 14 years old, okay? You, you can use it for other age groups as well. So you can use it for older age groups, uh, older than 14. You can also use it for age groups younger than, than 10 years old. But I wanna put you in a scenario where I'm working with up to four, uh, eight players in, in a small group. They're all pretty much aged between 10 to 12 is the age range and the session is lasting for one hour and a half okay so it's an hour and a half uh, <clears throat> training session which typically i do with the players i work with and <clears throat> and what i want to do is i want to break down how i plan my sessions how i design my sessions and if you want these are ideas that you can take with you or you can completely just ignore what I'm about to share with you today and focus and continue to do what you are doing. Okay. Essentially, this video is to help you and to give you ideas. All right. So the four main areas of focus when, when I run any sessions, and this, this is also if I do clinics, this is also if I do camps, this is also if I do one-on-one -on -one training, there's four key areas I focus on that I want the session outcome to, to be. Right, so the first one is technical. How are my players developing uh, technically? So how are my clients improving their technique during the session? Uh, physically, right? are they getting tired? Are they training at a high intensity? Are they struggling uh, physically with the session? Mental, are they focused? Are they completely engaged with what I'm teaching them, what I'm coaching them? And social is essentially is how they are engaging with the other clients in the the other clients or players within that group and how they are in, how they they are engaging with me as the trainer and coach. OK, so what I like to do is when I run small group training sessions with up to eight players, I always like to have arrival scrimmages. Okay? So if you're based in the UK. Right, essentially, arrival scrimmages are arrival matches. Okay, so they're any they're four v four or three v game, three v three matches, 
uh, depending on the size of the group. Okay. I'm going to focus on eight players. So what I typically do is as they start arriving, I put them into, into 4v4 matches. And the reason why I always like to start this way is because when players arrive at my sessions, and it's bit, and I'm talking more specifically the players I work with, you know, they've come, they've come from school. I typically run sessions during the evening. So they finish school. You know, a lot of them need to get focused on what we're about to, to work on during that session because it's 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 a high intense session. So these free three v three or four v four scrimmages helps the players just just to get in get engaged in the session. Uh, it also raises the the uh, excitement level of them because most kids like to play scrimmages. So as soon as they arrive, they get into a 3v3, 4v4 match, and that gets them focused and engaged into what we're about to work on in the next bit, right? So I usually run those, those scrimmages for 15 minutes. Again, if you're working with only four players, you can do 2v2 arrival matches. You can even do 1v1s, okay? If you're working with, with up to eight players, right, you can even start with 1v1 matches. I personally like to do a little bit uh, bigger the group so I like to do either 3v3 or 4v4s and it's, it's a little bit more game realistic uh, to the, the matches that they play on the weekend right so from that I like to go into a ball mastery for the next 10 minutes I make sure that this is really high high intense and they're getting a lot of touches of the ball okay this is individual work so each player will have a ball at their feet and they're working on different types of turns uh, changes of direction, changes of speed. And what I make sure is I make sure that I incorporate two or three progressions uh, into that. So, for example, uh, one of the progressions could be I introduce a set of cones. After every turn, they've got to dribble quickly, do a turn past the cone and then come back. Okay, so I introduce obstacles to make it a little bit more difficult for them while keeping the intensity really high uh, during this phase of, of the session. So after the ball mastery, I go into athletic development, which is what I call it. And this is where I introduce ladders, uh, hurdles, poles, speed and agility. I do some fitness and I always make sure that whatever I do, if I, ha if I have them going out uh, doing ladders, it always finishes with a shot at, at the goal. Or if I have them going through hurdles or in and out the uh, agility poles, everything finishes with a goal. Okay, so everything, either a pass into a goal, either a strike into the goal, but everything finishes. So it just keeps them motivated. And also it helps because if they're really high intense when they're going around the, uh, around the hurdles, the ladders, the poles, then the the quality of finishing into the goal will be high, okay? So the goal is just an incentive to make sure that they're working hard during the agility phase of the session. And then that's their, their kind of reward, which is uh, finishing into the goal. Sometimes I introduce a goalkeeper. Most of the times I don't, because what I like to do is I like them to, to mentally visualize if they were, there was a keeper there, where can I place the finish? So what I like to do is I like to get players to either place the ball into one of the, the corners. It could be either the left corner, right corner, top left corner, right left. Or sometimes I put cones and they have to try and, and score and place their, their, their shot through the corners in the goal. Okay. Now, the next bit is the technical phase. So this is without pressure. And this is... Uh, the phase of the session where we're focusing solely on what we're working on here during the session. So if the theme is striking, then again, the sole focus of this, this part of the session will be on uh, introducing the technique, the proper technique to striking a ball and breaking the technique down to a point where they're able to to implement it in the next bit, which is the skill phase, right? So this bit 
There's no defenders. There's no goalkeepers. All we're doing is we're mastering the skill and technique of that. So you're doing passing. It could be, you know, the breakdown of the pass. If you're doing finishing, it could be the breakdown of the finishing or striking. You know, if you're working with goalkeepers, it could be ball handling without pressure. Okay. So whatever the theme of that session is, the technical phase is where I work on individually the players without pressure just yet. Right. So once they've mastered that, we move on to the skill phase, which is the skill phase is now we put pressure in. So if we're doing striking, now I'm going to introduce either a goalkeeper to make it harder for the player or a defender where it becomes a 1v1 and they have to strike and shoot the ball quickly before they get closed down. OK, so this is the bit where essentially once we've mastered the technical phase, we move on to the skill bit. Where now we're we're getting a defender, introducing a defender, a goalkeeper to put pressure on that attacker when they have a ball. Okay. And then what I like to do is I like to finish off once they've, you know, once we've gone through step by step the session, the last 25 minutes, I like to do free play. And something I've written down as well. So I've written down 3v3 or 4v4 with normal size ball. So something I didn't talk about is when I do the arrival scrimmages, I always like to do them with a size free uh, soccer ball or football. Now, the reason is because it, the, the size free ball is obviously very, it's a lot smaller and it introduces that kind of street soccer uh, type of uh, training or, or system or form into the game right so when you use a size three your, your first touch has to be a lot better uh, the precision of your passing has to be a lot better and um, your movement to receive has to be sharper because that ball could bounce off you right so it's important to be positioned properly so it's a lot harder when you play with a size three football or, so or soccer ball okay now, the last bit of the session, when we go into the free play, that's when we introduce the normal size ball that those players are working with, right? So if you're if you're working with players aged 10 to 12, it will probably be a size four uh, ball. If you're working with older players, then it might be a size five. But the arrival scrimmage will always be with a size three, regardless of what age I'm working with. Even if I'm working with 19 to 18 year olds they're always going to start the session with a size free foot uh, football soccer ball right S to make it harder make it more challenging and it, it's just a, lo a lot more fun i feel because it introduces that kind of street play which a lot of players today they you know they don't have and they're not they're not playing Right. Most players that I work with and most players coaches work with, right? Players aren't playing out on the streets anymore. So those 15 first 15 minutes of the arrival scrimmages I do with a smaller size ball helps that player to, to uh, recreate that that street type of uh, moment where they work, they're playing with a smaller size uh, ball, and it's making the session a lot more challenging and also fun uh, for them, okay? So hopefully this helps. If you have any questions with regards to anything I've shared with, with you today, reach out to me, okay? And also if you need more help with your business, there's two ways you can get in contact with me. First one is you can book a free 15 to 20 minute call. So visit the Canly link in the description of this video. You can book a free call there. Uh, we'll jump on Zoom. I'll see where you are with your business, see where you want to get to, and I can show you some actionable steps to take to get you there. Or if you just want to send me uh, an email, then please do that as well. Send it to makemoneycoachingsports at gmail.com. Okay, thank you for watching. And if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest content.